So this is who I am. Uh, I do think it's funny that quote was auto-generated last night. So accurate for today. It's an omen. It is an omen. Um, so hi, hi everybody. We are some amount of time late. It probably won't matter because it's seven minutes, eight minutes. Um, my name is Mog. I'm a member of Makers Local 256 out of Huntsville. We do a lot of fun things there and uh, make stuff. Sometimes we finish projects. Start if fire. your name is not Mog. What? Start fires. Start fires. Put out fires. Uh, that kind of stuff. And I am a failure because I uh, suck at finishing things. And so uh, this year I was asking people what I should give a speech on. And uh, some people jokingly said that I, I should give this talk about completing things because I am the worst at completing things. <laughs> and so that's what we're going to talk about today. So why am I a failure? See, there's, there you go, right there. Hey, failure. Why, that you just looks so wrong. Your slides? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing is working without a plan. Like today, I just got to like, oh, I'll just show up and I'll plug my laptop in and that'll work. And I'll be able to know where the room is. <laughs> That's a big, big thing. No, I, I showed up and I looked at the chart and all of it said X's on the series and I'm like, oh, no speech today. And I was done. So yeah, my other thing is, you know, procrastinate like a lot of people I'm sure. Don't get what I need done when I need it done. And Reddit and whatnot. Uh, bloat. Often when I'm working on a project, I decide, oh, it should do all these other things that are really not that important and that ends up taking a lot of time and you don't finish stuff. And the other thing is, kind of the opposite of bloat is I say, oh, this would work so much better if it was faster, smaller, prettier, cheaper, or whatnot. And there's really no need to do that the majority of the time. They have a pill Frankly. for that. Huh? They have a pill for that. They have a pill for that? your optimization. I'll, I'll talk to you after the, after the thing. You seem to be an expert. And I, I can give you some information. I don't think you understand what that's in. So try. Uh, oh, the resolution is so small, that's right redacted. Redacted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not sure what that is. <laughs> How do I get out of full screen? <laughs> Distracting! <laughs> My logo in your way! So that works. <laughs> I'm not a leader office master, it seems. So yeah, redacted or distracted, both accurate reasons why you had prone to failure. So this is mostly a talk about do as I say, not as I do. I'm, I'm not as good. And getting things done as they should be. So let's get something done today. Any suggestions? <laughs> what we should get done? Tim, build an amps for me. That's cool. I don't think we can get that done though. Get the talk done. Get the talk done? <laughs> That's something everyone should do. Give a talk at Freaknik. It's so easy. <laughs> right, but I'm like a failure, as I've already said. So you, not a failure, should succeed. So let's uh, give a talk at Freak Nick. 19, y'all are all a little late for that one. But 20 is around the bend, so maybe catch up. So first thing, get your things done. You need your, your first slide. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Og. I'm from uh, Huntsville, Alabama. I'm a member of Megs Local 256. Uh, so yeah, don't don't do that. <laughs> so step one or zero. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. What do you want to do? So we want to give a talk at Freaknik 19. So what do we need to do to actually accomplish that goal? Pick a topic you want to talk about. Dusty, what do you want to talk about? Leave office. Leave office. <laughs> So you get, you get your idea, you uh, need to submit the talk for review so you can actually give it at the con instead of just in the hallway, like with a homeless person or something. Um, you need to write an outline for your talk. Uh, you need to actually write the talk. That, that's a tricky step right there. Um, you need to practice the talk so you're not just like looking at the slides as you go to be sure what you wrote. So you have to memorize and you look professional. What step you're on now? Pictures. Question mark. And then profit is hidden, apparently. <laughs> because, uh, that's not going to happen, it seems, today. 
Um, so how, now that you know what you need to do, you need to build a, a path to actually get there. So you need to set goals and what you're going to do, when you're going to do those things. So big thing, submitting the talk by the deadline. If you don't do that, you will not talk. Um, you need to write your whole speech. Oh wait, don't write your whole speech. That's bad. Very bad. <laughs> you end up losing your place and starting over. Just not good. You need to, one easy way is the deadline was a month before the con, so you know you were accepted a month before, so that's like a lot of time to write speech if you're actually, you know, on the ball. You only need to like, you know, do a couple slides a day, and you'll, you'll get it done. You need to get to the con, that seemed to be a problem today for me, uh, and be awake and on time for your speech. Yeah, that's, that's a tricky one. Uh, the third thing you actually, now that you've planned, you need to actually do these things um, and keeping track of it. If you don't keep track of it, it's like it's not done. So uh, what I recommend and I, I use a lot of is to-do lists. Uh, this is org mode and Emacs. Uh, <laughs> it's a great tool for keeping track of stuff. There's a lot of other tools. But um, I find when you have like a wall of red to-dos, it is, you know, um, Scary, but as you turn them green, you don't feel accomplished and keeps you motivated to keep doing work. And, and that's the big thing is to pace yourself. It's real easy to sit down at like 4.46 in the morning and just bang out a bunch of slides, but uh, it's not always the best idea and it leads to some bad, bad stuff, like I've been saying. But if you pace yourself, it's pretty easy to get a, a good presentation done in time for a conference like this. Um, <laughs> reward yourself. Um, and so that's that's also why the, the two is like, you're seeing these <laughs> things done and you feel good. Or you can reward yourself another day, other ways, like the premature thing, apparently. Uh, uh, and so after you've done all the work, you can celebrate and brag about that you did good work which is the best part. And you really want to not do this during your work because the, uh, you don't want to get the enjoyment from talking about doing work rather than actually doing your work because then you're not gonna do the work. That's a big problem I have at least. Um, and then the fifth thing is you need to do something else because if you only ever do one thing in your life, kind of ridiculous. An unbelievable. A single target A single target that should not be your one moment in life. <laughs> Like need to, the internet on the radio. Right, radio. you don't want to just put internet on the radio, radio as well. Um, and so in between all these steps, you have steps uh, A, for example, deal with failure. So for example, if you don't write two slides a day for a week, you should not just say, fuck it and stop. You should actually you know, try to catch up, get back on track. And so you have to deal with um, things. Or for example, if you come to the talk, and there's no HDMI port, and so you can't uh, use your laptop. You have to be ready to you know, SSH, copy the file over, and get it working on a different laptop. Um, step two, so like, uh, or step B, deal with the feature creep problem. So originally when I was gonna do this talk, I wanted to write the talk as I was going to do the talk, which was a really bad idea, and more than my original thought process. And so you have to be able to just Say no to more more stuff. You get, just get something done. Um, C, deal with distractions. Uh, so in particular with me at our shop, we have so many fun projects going on and it's very easy to jump from project to project and uh, you just need to be able to deal with that, not, not do that as much. Some tools I would recommend uh, for getting things done, um, board mode and Emacs. It's a really good tool for uh, managing to-do <coughs> lists and uh, time management and whatnot. Uh, there's a tool called Hamster, which is also a very good tool for time management if you don't like Emacs. Uh, logs your stuff, does to-do lists, it's pretty cool. Uh, GitLab and GitLab CI are, if it's a software project, are really great tools for uh, automating your builds and uh, managing your code for you. Because like I was saying before, accountability is one of the greatest drivers to getting things done. So being able to see the results of your work as you work is very valuable. <laughs> so having like a continuous integration script constantly build your, your software uh, helps you get your software done because you can see it working in each step. 
Um, Tam Man board. Um, so we have one of these at our shop, um, and I think it's incredibly effective. Um, like I was saying before about the accountability and and motivating people to get things done uh, because of the social accountability between you and your peers. You can see somebody is lagging on a project, uh, it becomes a shasta, and they're not working on it. That's bad. Exactly. That's the way it should be. Shastas are bad. <laughs> Um, and so that's that. Uh, and finally, uh, the Shia LaBeouf thing. I think that's pretty motivating. You should play that on loop while you work. <laughs> huh? Yeah, just up in the corner. Uh, you should get like the little app where he just blends into the background. It's great. I think we've discovered the source of the premature optimization. <laughs> <laughs> uh, questions, comments, thoughts? How long have you been a motivational speaker? <laughs> <laughs> well, I started down by the river about like eight years ago. And then I found this van so that I could tour around, get, get more places. So probably uh, 17 years. You think you'll ever be successful at it? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it's still unknown. I would say tonight, not one of my better days. But at least you're up there trying. <laughs> there you go, at least I'm up there trying. We get there if you'd like that out of the league, too. Um, so yeah, that's my contact info again. And now, Jeff, Jeff's gonna give us a talk about putting things off. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, as you can see, I'm not prepared. I'm <laughs> uh, doing very well at it. Don't be me. <laughs> Crap, I'm scared you. That's pretty good. <laughs> The most important thing about getting things done is finishing early. I, I think I finished uh, 40 minutes early. That's pretty impressive. Woo As usual. As usual. <laughs> Even more impressive than considering you started late. Started late? I know. I didn't get an award. Early for whom? <laughs> what do the numbers mean on the bottom right? Um, those are timestamps. Yeah, that's what he was working on, it, I think. From. Uh, from uh, as I was uh, working last night, yeah. because I did not uh, do this correctly. Anytime time I added a new slot, I time stepped the date. I'm typed it. Time stepped the time <laughs> when I was working on it. <laughs> you took you four hours to do that last slide. <laughs> <laughs> what was that the between you? When I did, so like we were at breakfast and uh, Jeff was like, "Oh yeah, I want to give a talk." You had breakfast or And so I gave him time. No, like 3 p.m. <laughs> oh, oh. The slides. I was like, I was like eight. I listened to you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, when we were at breakfast, uh, 856. <laughs> so when we were eating breakfast, that's when that slide was created. But there's no date. It's today. Yeah, he started but, today. So you started at 3 o'clock in the morning on the other ones? I don't, I don't think that's completely yes. accurate. Yes. I think if we go back, we'll yeah. see, uh, nowhere in his talk did he mention quality. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's about getting things done, yeah, not, not getting quality. things done well. So now you should make it better. How much it jumps around? Yeah, well, sometimes I added a slide in the middle, and so I had a four keep time. I started as early as 2.34, my friend. Not at 3 in the morning. This morning? <laughs> That's correct. This is not one of my better talks. Probably my worst. No. 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 There was one worse. <laughs> <laughs> it shall not be named. Don't want to talk to yourself. <laughs> You still have time to <laughs> That's my second talk. <laughs> you still have time to segue into bit message. <laughs> so, that's perfect. I have the I have the slides with me. We can talk that talk again. That would be funny. So tell us about all these projects you haven't finished. Um so one of the projects I haven't finished right here is uh my friend Tim and I, we uh made some amplifiers, uh class uh A B. A B amplifiers for uh, cigar box guitars, little five watt uh, amplifiers. Um, and we went through several iterations. This is the eighth version of the board? It's Rev 8. It's Rev 8, yeah, but I don't think we printed Rev 5 and Rev 3. True. So yeah, it's like the sixth version of this board that's actually been printed. We had them assembled in China for the first time, that was cool. Um, and we are sitting on about 100 boards that are not not sold and not, not quite finished. This is the, 99. Oh, right. We sold one apparently today. So we're at 99. So that's done. How much are they? 
How much are they, Tim? Uh, How much did you sell it for? Stop. Stop. And Stop. where's Stop. my money? <laughs> <laughs> money me. Money. Um, this is unassembled. Um, just parts in a bag. It's 20 bucks. Parts in a bag. Ah, free bag included. <laughs> parts is parts. Practically sells itself. Practically. <laughs> I, I hear you want one now? <laughs> or two. One for well, your charge. I thought. How about this? I give you a what? I give yeah, you a dollar. Need an amplifier. How <laughs> <laughs> about the iron? Okay. Do you have an iron? Right yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. How many people have paid oh, for iron? iron? Uh, several. Eight. Eight. Uh, basically, Kickstarter. How many have done? <laughs> <laughs> how many uh, have there are? How many? How many were delivered? Half of one. I just told half, 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 half of one. one. And you still have that? Yeah, I just. I do. <laughs> 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 Uh, so yeah, another project. <laughs> Let's have done. Um, <laughs> is uh. Yeah, here we go. So uh, one of the things I travel a lot, and I wanted a soldering iron that was worth a damn that I could bring places, and I didn't. Uh, I could actually bring it in my laptop bag. So I designed this soldering iron controller that works with uh, standard Heiko irons, and it operates on like 19 volts, or like 12 volts to 24 volts DC. So it works with like any laptop charger. Um, this one we modified to work directly with like the ThinkPad brick, so that I could just plug it in. And uh, it does around uh, up to 60 watts of power through a standard iron, and it costs like $8 in parts, which is pretty cool. But I bought a bunch of handles from China that had bad uh, thermistors, uh, and so I kind of like stopped it forever. <laughs> and I just haven't, I haven't bought new ones, I'm, or I haven't uh, installed the new ones yet, because uh, that takes time. Is it on your to-do list? It's on, it's, it's, it's on my to-do list. It's a big red, red mark marker. That, that looks sad. Um, I've been working on a radio project uh, that does uh, encrypted uh, VHF radio over MERS frequencies. Uh, I have it working in GNU radio, but I do not have it working in actual hardware yet. And that's been going on for about two years of not being finished. Uh, what else have I not finished? Uh, the, uh, the, the train, train listener? The train whistle? Listener. Uh, oh yeah, the train listener. There's a train track by our shop, and it's kind of annoying. It's difficult to hear. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I was just going to amplify the sound at the track so we could hear it. No, um, it's a safety thing. They, they broadcast before they go by that the train is going to be uh, on the track, and it's not super hard to, to capture that. And uh, I was going to make a, a thing for our sign. We have a big billboard at our shop that shows uh, just random information like uh, the weather, temperature, and uh, alerts alert. from the shop. Amber alerts as well. <laughs> no, we should add that. Because <laughs> that would be really weird. We should add like a news. Another project. <laughs> um, anyways, I, I was going to build something that would uh, broadcast into the alert message if the train was go going down the track. Um, before it happened. Open a pull request for the news. Thing. Yes. So um, where I stay at Sweet now, truck, um, there's a train track, like maybe some bushes or in between my apartment. Um, is this project like somewhere open where I could uh, download it? Um, so I have new radio blocks that I can push uh, tonight probably. I haven't, probably. I haven't pushed them yet, but uh, it, it depends if it's on the same, um, if they use the same transmitter we use, but um, it probably works. Uh, or, it would be probably, it probably doesn't work. It would probably, it would probably set you up in the right direction to find where they're broadcasting. Because especially if you just want to know that the train is coming, you can just look for any spike before, before the train goes by and you can just catch that. Um, what our train tracks actually advertise how many cars are on the, are on the track and some other information. And so I was going to try to grab all that. Yes? Does the vibration of the train mess up through you for errors? Um, has a mess. We're not that close. Yeah, we're we're less than that themselves. And, and the bigger problem is the three D printer has to be uh, getting things done, uh, which is also a problem at our shop. One of my other failed products, uh, I bought a Delta Bot. Or you were told not to buy that piece of junk. By several people told me to buy this Delta Bot. The Delta Bots were great, and I believe the Delta Bots are not great, by the way. 
and uh, very frustrating. And so I have an almost working Delta bot that has been almost working for probably two months now that I haven't finished. It's on the pile. Um, What's wrong with pass that project on one of your three children? Right? <laughs> three children? I mean, you have five. Uh, I think I, 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 I two that I'm six, aware of. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You'll, I, you'll have a third one by the time you finish. Do I have one on the way? Is this, this is my birthday present early? That's pretty creepy. <laughs> you mentioned uh, organizational tools. Uh, the wiki is a huge organizational tool for the shop. Yep, that's that's a good place um, to catalog information and uh, help get stuff done. You should have had a screenshot of the Kanban board. Yeah. The Kanban board kind of shames people into working on projects, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the Kanban board, and, and also, like, it's kind of hard if you're just working on it by yourself, but, like, the whole, like, kind of scrum idea of breaking up the task and yeah. the achievable task. Uh, well, we have a couple of huh? to get stuff in the done column. Then that's true, right. That's Mostly one thing. Like you and a couple other people. Our, uh, our Kanban board gets, uh, uh, all the done items get removed once a month and they're tallied. So I think people that, are kind that, of competing. That was changed. Now we, uh, we, we clear it once it fills up. Yeah. Or like, uh, once it fills up, whenever we hit it. So don't declare it anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> so salty in here today. <laughs> Um, We're good. You stretched out another ten minutes. That's another ten minutes. Put a bow there. Is it your birthday? How old are you? It's not my birthday. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was. Then why did the site tell us to tell you happy birthday? Yeah, I don't know. The internet says you can't believe anything you read on the internet. It's not really small day. What said to tell you happy birthday? Well, did you? You guys can all sing me happy birthday. That's legal now. Yeah. Now I'm good. No, it's not. The thrill is gone now. Now it's not a crime. I can't do it anymore. I'm going to sing you take it off. Yeah. Take it off. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so yeah, I'm sorry that this was not a better talk. <laughs> no, you're not. Don't lie. Well, like, well, I do think I should not take speech, uh, speech suggestions from other people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you should you should disregard your rule that you will only go to cons that you talk at. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so you think sh I should be here, but I should I like shut you. up. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you don't have anything to talk about. Seen uh, but not heard. <laughs> that's a good thought. I'll take that. I'm pretty I'll happy. take that note. It was my idea. Oh, it was your idea. Yeah, was, Are you happy with the, the no, outcome? Because it was just the maker. It's a bullshit idea. idea. You're not supposed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I still think my uh, late at night. I had a, a premonition that, given what I I said that the talk was going to be about was getting shit done, and I thought, no, there's another way to take that. <laughs> And I could just give a talk about bowel movements for an hour. I would love that. But I, I went against that urge. I'm still not sure if that was the right choice. There's more ground to cover the other way. Yes? So, I don't know. Maybe you can help me out with this. I have the problem of I have all these projects that I want to do. And so I find myself hopping from project to project. Um, even using a ticketing system to track. The things that I'm doing still, other things look more attractive, and I'll just hop. What's a good thing? Always been here. Uh, uh, so, like I said earlier, I guess it's, it's always going to be that way, um, and you really ultimately just have to pick one and set, you know, um, a boundary with yourself to, you know, like get that thing done. Um, and it's difficult. It's something that I'm clearly horrible at. But you also um, have to like decide what what does done mean. Right, and, and I think that's a big part, is, is uh, defining setting, setting, like, defining time. what you're going to do, and then doing that. Yeah. And I think if you don't do that, you're never going to know when you're done. You're never going to know um, when it's we time can, to move on to another project. To be, to be, to be this far, agile, this, uh, yeah. to be more of a hard goal than, than to work on this, work on this, work on this. You know? And I think breaking up into really yeah. small tasks makes it easier to, one, if you want to still jump around, you can still jump around, but you'll still be accomplishing real things as opposed to just sticking around, not, not actually getting anything done or doing, like, my biggest problem is, is feature creep. Is it, I decide, oh, that's really cool. I read about something really cool somewhere. I'm like, oh, I'll add this to my project. And so I half-ass add it to my project. And now the project still can't do anything more. 
and still no closer to being done, but I feel accomplished because I poured like 10 hours into it or something, but you just can't do that kind of stuff because it doesn't help you. It doesn't help anybody. Uh, the second line is a, is a bit message address. Bit message is a peer-to-peer uh, -peer decentralized uh, way of sending messages across the internet. Called it. So this address, if you send it to me, I will have no idea who sent the message. Uh, there will be no connection between the two of us. Uh, no one will know that you sent me the message. Um, huh? Except the feds. No, um, so it, it works a lot like Bitcoin in that uh, you, have a, you have a distributed hash table where all the messages are, and all the messages are just encrypted blobs. So he sends a message to my public key, and, and so there's a blob of data that I then, um, the way it works is every client tries to decrypt the envelope of every message that comes through the system. And so there's no way of telling who's sending messages, who's receiving messages. Um, and at least currently, there's no way for anybody to break it. In theory, it's also easier for them to break because anybody, any user of the network can absorb all the messages. Um, it's just a matter of decrypting them, which is currently incapable. Anyone? This would have been a much better talk for you to give. I gave it last year. You should go to YouTube. Oh, okay. Two years ago. Two, two years ago. Two years ago. What did I get to talk about last year? Or I didn't go last year. No, I didn't. I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, I talked about radio. Yeah. 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 Um, how, how has BitMessage changed in the past two years? Uh, so BitMessage has gotten a lot bigger. Um, they're not at the point where they've sharded yet. Um, so one of the big problems... Uh, Shard. 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 <laughs> Shard. <laughs> there, there, so, there was the laughter in the back and I had to... <laughs> Shard. They haven't, Shard. Anyway, they haven't um, got sharded done yet? They have not, sh <laughs> they have not sharded yet. And so uh, the amount of information is getting bigger. They've added some protocol support for uh, cell phones, basically, where right now every message, the to and from, is encrypted, and no one can say, see who it is. But they wanted support for, um, you could send a message to a phone, basically, and the to would be unencrypted. So then the phone could query the hash table for just the two messages, and so you're not downloading. Um, typically, bit oh. message traffic is around uh, 800 megs a day, and so you wouldn't want that on your phone because of your data plan or whatever. Um, and so the way around that is they, they allow senders to purposely not encrypt the uh, two in the envelope. And so then the phone applications can just download messages sent to them, which makes it a lot better. But it also removes a whole lot of anonymity. Um, and the way some people get around that is most people that use BitMessage only connect to it to, through Tor. So it's impossible to see who is downloading messages. Um, aside from that, there's not been a whole lot of growth. It's kind of been like Bitcoin in that uh, people are like, oh, this stuff's so cool. We can do everything with it. And then it's like, oh, it's a lot of work. Not going to do anything with it. Uh, the coolest thing that has come out of it to me in the last year is somebody wrote a, uh, a Mailder, a Mailder uh, client. So I have it set up now that I can just use it in Emacs. Um, <laughs> it just comes in like any other email source to me now, which is nice. Um, is that available, easily available? Yes. Um, so the main client is called uh, QT BitMessage. That's, that's maintained by the, the original developers. Um, the, the client I use is called NotBit, which is uh, a nice one. And there are a few other ones. Uh, there is uh, also an email service now that will s bounce messages into the real world for you. So if you uh, want to send people hate mail, or if you are a ransom request, if you're <laughs> ransom request or you're the journalist stuck behind enemy lines. You can do it that way. Um, probably <laughs> for the best. So what you're saying is anonymity implies guilt? Yes. <laughs> if you want to be anonymous, you are guilty. You can quote Only me. criminals want to use encryption? <laughs> yes, especially in the UK now, apparently. It's pretty upsetting. Um, so, yeah. Wow, a lot of time. <laughs> Tell us about the UK thing. I missed that one. Apparently. Um, so they passed a law that um, banning certain types of encryption on the servers. So, uh, for example, uh, iMessage operating in the UK, mm -hmm. there is no longer, or according to the law. So I don't know um, how long the companies have to come into compliance 
or if they have to leave the UK altogether. But they have to not store things on the servers encrypted. Uh, right. So they have to rewrite IMAS, iMessage for uh, UK users so that either all the public key, like, like the way iMessage works right now is Apple is handling the key exchange. But so it would be trivial for Apple for the UK to add government key to every message. And so then they would have on their servers a way for the government to just come in and decrypt them all. Um, and there'd be no way for anybody to know that, that happened, except for this law is a very big deal. Everybody's aware of it. Um, so what I uh, hope happens is people just pull out of the UK, but obviously not everybody has that option. Um, and it looks like this law has uh, precedence to expand throughout Europe in general. So, uh, Which is funny considering their privacy. You know, laws. Right, they, right. They're they're safe, privacy. removal of safe harbor for you know, right. companies moving data to the US and then they're turning around and screwing it on the other end. Right? Yep. <clears throat> and, that, and that's the other thing that happened uh, this month where yeah. they proved the or Facebook or. wasn't actually uh, obeying the uh, <laughs> European privacy rules, mm -hmm. that they weren't actually deleting stuff. Um, and so now like they, those. rather than rather than being trusted by default, they have to prove they're mm -hmm. actually deleting um, stuff as, a, as they're supposed to, according to their European uh, privacy laws. Mm -hmm. So that's a big one. Do you have a schematic for the amplifier? Uh, yes, and it's... It's literally on me, but... It's on GitHub. It's on GitHub, and it's one of the cool things about the... Uh, oh, I'm gonna read Nathan's mail! Yeah, yeah sweet! Yeah. Let's open a new tab. Just <laughs> 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 Results in your history. I don't know. Everyone close their eyes. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Wait, there's the public. Where is public? Why don't you just have it go to a public page? I'm just going to go to GitHub because it's lazy. <laughs> I have it mirrored on GitHub, but I forget how to. I thought I had it set up that way, but I guess it uh, stopped when I did an update. So yeah, this is my all my repositories have not done stuff. Uh, <laughs> spam. Galba. So uh, this is. Uh, Tim and I. Uh, it was failed, it was I hate these buttons, Nathan. <laughs> it, the page up and page down button should be there. <laughs> no, your arrow keys. Use J and K. No, I want a page up. Anyways, so this is the the board. All this stuff is generated automatically through our continuous integration scripts for school. But here is the schematic um, for the amplifier. Um, it's a it's a two stage chip amplifier, uh, starting with just a, a little AV chip, the TL zero seventy one, um, and the power amplification stage is a TDA two thousand three. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So really, uh, and as well, it was designed to run off of nine volts, but everything on the circuit and on the board could handle up to uh, 12 volts, and at 12 volts you get more wattage out. So the, the you TDA get eight is, watts, right? uh, the TDA's actual potential is 10 watts. Okay. Because um, it's meant for use in like car stairs and shit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sounds awesome. What the hell, Nathan? <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing that somehow? You can close that. <laughs> can I say hi? You can close it. it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know what those other links are, so you should close them. Uh, <laughs> start clicking <laughs> things. <laughs> you can just How was the experience of getting the uh, board made in China? What? How was the experience of getting the board made in China? That's so. Uh, Tim and I made several boards, um, some more complete than others. Uh, we made a, uh, a learn how to solder kit. Uh, we made uh, Wi-Fi motor controls. We made uh, a two-factor authentication token. Uh, several other things. Uh, a buzzer system for uh, like Scholar Bowl, kind of like the Scholastic mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, and so we've had a lot of experience with uh, several different vendors. Uh, I would say mostly all good. We've only had one board house this is same, give us right? boards that didn't work out of the box. Um, smart prototyping is the ones we went through to actually pre-populate the boards, and I would say I was very happy with that. Um, they do a lot of hand holding and uh, help help get. Uh, smart prototyping boards. Yeah. 
Yeah, but this is smart dash. Smart dash. Smart dash program. Program. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and their prices are pretty fair. Um, uh, I know Seed Studios has something similar uh, that I've heard good things about, but I've never actually used used them directly. Um, the nice thing about Smart Prototyping is they were able to uh, get all of the parts. Um, the TDA 2003 chip we use has been out of print for a while now, and so there's tons of second source available. Um, in the past, we've just been buying it off eBay, but they were able to you know, just go down the market and grab, um, grab them and not charge us an exorbitant fee. Um, it's pretty nice. Uh, you pretty much are just paying extra if you want it faster, but every, all the quality is the same from just about any of the providers, I would say. People should make boards. I gave better talks about making boards in previous comments. You had me with you. <laughs> yeah, with Tim. <laughs> he helps out. I noticed that you named the file where your slides live like it was for next free day. Huh? Oh, did I really name it PN20? Yeah. So maybe by PN20 it'll be done. This is now getting ready. You guys see the return of the talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to work on accepting, like accepting without talking. Oh, right, exactly. Don't do like lots of I've lost my ability to improvise. Uh, this one's the biggest harm. Uh, so, yeah, I guess that's it.